trying to get that thing to sink and get down to the bottom right now. We should be at the beginning of slack tide. Did we just get a fish already? Oh, no way, you guys. There he comes. Oh, that is a monster bass, you guys. That is by far the biggest bass I've got out here. No wonder it was so hard to get in. What's going on guys? Nick here with Angling Attics Pacific Northwest. Welcome back. Today we're down again on the Oregon coast. Uh, I wanted to show you guys kind of my go-to rig and what it is uh, I use and how it is I fish it when I come out here and fish the jetty, specifically for black bass. I seem to have a lot of luck when I come out here, uh, knock on wood that I don't walk out there and get uh, skunked today but a uh, quick uh, little rundown of what i've got going on here i'm using the uh pro the cabela's pro guide 96 uh, we got a the quantum pulse uh, bait caster on there we got 30 pound braided line running down to a 20 pound fluorocarbon and uh, i've just put those together with a, a uni to uni knot and that's going to come down to a 3 8 ounce jig head, which is really kind of key. Anytime I've tried to switch up going heavier, going lighter, it doesn't get the job done. I lose things. And a lot of the times I'm coming here between that hour uh, before slack tide and that hour after the tide change. And so that 3 8 ounce seems to be perfect for uh, what it is I'm trying to get out there and accomplish. And one of those things being not losing my gear. So... What I like to match that up with, and it's gonna cost a little bit more if you pick it up down here, but I always get these from the uh, Barview Jetty store over here, and I don't mind paying uh, a little bit more uh, just to know that it's helping out those folks that run the place over there. But these are the uh, Berkeley Gold Baits. It's a three inch anchovy, and it's got the little paddle tail on there. And uh, you wanna make sure, I'll show you guys when we get out on the water, uh, kind of like how you wanna get these set up so they do look as natural as possible uh, in the water. But basically that's gonna be the quick setup. I do have other things that we can do today to try and get on some fish, but uh, I wanted to keep it simple. Uh, just the, the bare minimums, if you had a rod reel line, uh, some of these little swim jigs and a couple of these baits and you'd be able to walk out here and start catching fish on the jetty. So let's get our stuff, get out on the jetty and start getting on some fish and show you guys how you can do the same. As I'm sure you guys can see, it's really calm out here right now. And that doesn't happen all too often. So I'm actually really excited to uh, be over here and about to fish right now. So we're gonna get out these little uh, paddle tail gulp baits. I'm gonna show you guys how you can get these things set up. Now, like I said, you you wanna get them on there correctly because when you get them on there correctly, it actually gives this really natural, well, unless you've done what I've done and smashed up your <laughs> little guy there. Let's try another one of these. But basically, when you get these, and if you get it set up right, you'll notice when you cast it out in the water and you retrieve it, that it looks very natural. That paddle tail will sit there and flip and uh, it actually looks really good. So one of the first things I like to do is we're gonna take this jig head and we're gonna match up basically where it is that this hole should be coming out. So if I've got this, you know, this little piece of a uh, lead should be sticking out the front. So if that's all the way in there, you can kind of see that right about this area here is where we're gonna wanna pop out. So I'm gonna take it, turn it upside down. We're gonna feed it right through the fish's face on here. Now, you're gonna to wanna to be careful, if you can, to try and keep it straight and to keep the hook from popping out one of these other sides, which is a lot easier said than done because these things uh, can really be kind of a pain in the butt and move around quite a bit. But it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you guys can take the time to make it more perfect, you're gonna get more, like I said, this natural presentation. So when you cast out there, uh, you're gonna see that uh, it gets more fish. So. so now that we've got that stuff all set up and we are almost to slack tide right now, which means it should be really easy to be able to get these things out in the water and working properly without uh, having too much uh, resistance or fluctuation from the, uh, the current that's moving here. So we can just get this thing out there and get it swimming. Let's get that out there. Now that it's out there, you're going to see, I'm just going to let this thing, especially if we don't have too much uh, current, I'm going to try and get it to just sink where it's at right now. We might already be on the bottom because we are at low tide. Let's see here. 
So we're gonna reel a little bit, give it a bounce, let it drop, slack in the line, reel it. And then what you're looking for, and I've noticed it in some of my other videos, is you actually see the tip of the rod move just a bit when a fish is on. And it actually, I mean, it seems kind of obvious, but there's been a lot of times where I haven't even felt the fish yet. And, but looking back at GoPro footage, you can see that there was a, uh, a fish on long before I had noticed. Water's actually looking pretty dirty down here. I'm gonna try this side because I'm <clears throat> catching on a, a rock that's down here. There we go. So I was saying sometimes you'll catch them when it's just on the drop like that. I always like to grab them by the lip like that. You got spikes up there that'll, that'll get your hand. But see, that one was kind of a surprise. So it'll come up and just grab it. So you've got to be really attentive. And that's one of the reasons I like doing those pops on there because uh, you never know when a fish is going to grab it on the way up or the way down and giving it those little pops will give it a quick little hook set and uh, next thing you know you've got a fish on. So it's kind of crazy. A lot of times it is as easy as just taking this bait and throwing it out there and letting it, you know, and having it get hit on the drop. You never know. It's a fun way to do it though. I love this. I'm just going to do a slow reel. That one feels good. Oh, get away from the rocks. There we go. Oh, that one looks nice, guys. That is a nice one. Let's see. Bring in over here. Oh, yeah. That's what it's all about, finding these tanks. That is a nice bass, you guys. All right, guys, I will give you one, one good pointer, though. I would definitely come out here and have a, a selection of these and you know i, I say three eighths ounce but that's because that's what i feel comfortable fishing with and what i'm most used to fishing with uh, for you it might be a half ounce it might be a quarter ounce so the best thing to do is really go out and just kind of pick up these things are rather cheap anyhow is just pick up a little bit of a selection because you are going to have changing tides and so you are going to really need to be able to change the weight of your uh, little jigs here so you're able to get into that strike zone and another thing is you're going to be switching out your line a lot. You're going to be snagging a lot. You're going to be losing a lot of gear, which is why I uh, recommend having some of these guys and uh, some of those uh, extra baits. Uh, there's different things, different kinds of plastics and stuff that are out there that will work just as effective, maybe better for you guys. But again, it's one of those things you want to get out there and experiment and find what works best for you. And this has kind of been my go-to because it's worked. And so I can come out here and on any given day, I can come out here and fish confidently. So I'm gonna get this thing tied back on, get one of my last baits on there, and uh, see if I can't get on a couple more fish. 
All right, guys, another great tip would be to stick and move. Now, if you're out here and you're catching fish and all of a sudden the bite turns off, you could move five feet in either direction and it might be right back on. So if you're not catching any more fish or you haven't been catching fish and you have the bank access out here to, to expand and get out and try and find some fish, definitely do that. The last thing you want to do is sit in one spot not catching fish when you've got all of this bank access around you to get out here and get on some fish. So I did manage to hook a few from right here. I've lost a couple jigs to my left and to my right. And I really kind of just feel like this area isn't uh, whatever it was doing, it's not doing anymore. Uh, so I'm definitely, I'm gonna grab my stuff. I'm gonna move down a little ways and uh, see if I can't find some more fish.